Experts say population determines the way of life of the people in the community and the need for people to understand the dynamics of population in that country. And this drives us to the second edition of the topic we discussed last week on your image, and that is population dynamics in conflict resolution, the role of public relations. Once again, let me uh, welcome my guests who were with me last week. They promised to be here this week, and thank God they are part of the program today. Mr. Larry Anifowushi, former director, National Population Commission, you're welcome. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. And I also have the former general manager, corporate communications of NIPOS, Mr. Tai Olani. Once again, you're welcome to the show. It's my pleasure once again. Last week, uh, you talked about uh, urban rural migration during sexual exercise. And uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't elaborate more on this, but I know that that's a danger in doing this during sexual exercise. Can you please let our people know what are the, the demerits of a movement during sexual exercise? I uh, mentioned the other time that so many things are wrong with us with our census taking. Mm. Census basically is for developmental planning. One of the things that affect us negatively is our misconception of wanting to see that our, our how do I put it now, our home mm. in quotes, okay. that we swell its population. Mm. This our people do by census migration. Mm. You live in Lagos, you live in Paracourt, you live in Abuja, but when it is time for census, you travel back home mm. to your village to be enumerated in your village. This is wrong. Mm. Why is this affecting us negatively? I'll give an example. You live in Lagos. Your area where you live in Lagos, government has provided you some basic amenities. amenities. Secondary schools, transformer for your area, and this and that. But when you travel back home mm. during census to swell the population <laughs> of your village, mm. when the results come out, government will look at these figures to see what should be provided in these different towns and villages. And because your population in your village has swelled from 10,000 to 75,000, government will probably say, oh, instead of a health center or health post, mm. we we'll need to give them a general hospital. Mm. Government will go to provide a general hospital. After census, you go back to your normal place of abode. The general hospital that has been provided in your village will become underutilized. Mm. Meanwhile, when you go back from your different places to Lagos, mm. where you reside normally, you swell the population there, and you will see that the infrastructures that have been provided there mm. will not meet up mm. with, with the standard with, of, the, with the population of the people mm. who have come back from their various villages and towns to where they normally stay. Mm. So these are, these are part of the ways that census migration affects us negatively. We also see that when we talk of census in Nigeria, our concern has always been, oh, my place, uh, which, one, which tribe is more, which one is. Mm -hmm. But census taking has nothing to do with whether Aousa is more than Yoruba or whether Igbo is less than <laughs> Yoruba. Basically, the consideration is for people residing within the entity called Nigeria mm -hmm. so that government will be able to plan for them. When the power uh, agency mm. provides power or the railway services provide services, they do not think of only Nigerians utilizing these services. It is for people residing in Nigeria, mm -hmm. whether they are foreign nationals, whether they are nationals of Nigeria, mm. or what have you. And that mm. is why basically concern should be for developmental planning and not the politics that we play with census taking in Nigeria. All right. Uh, let, let me start from where he ended. Uh, he's talking about uh, manipulation. 
Yeah. And uh, do you think that uh, politicians also contribute to this problem? Because uh, you mentioned people who migrate, who live one place or the other, talking about tribal population, so to speak, uh, so, and manipulation. Do you think that politicians also brainwash people so that they can go back to their villages during the exercise? And this, of course, will create problems. It will create conflict that uh, government could not even solve. Yeah, this is where it is very necessary for each and every one of us to be mindful of the public relations implication of action or and inaction. Mm. Like I have said before, you discover that when politicians or those in government say they are planning, they don't plan with the people. They, in most cases, also lay claim to planning for the people. And who are the people? Everybody. Mm. that lives in a particular environment. Whether such a person belongs to your uh, religion, your uh, uh, political party, or what have you. The idea that certain people are living in a particular geographic space, mm. you should be very mindful of what goes to them. But by manipulating this impression that it is only son of the soil, Mm. or stuff like that, asking people to move from one place to another only during the time of politics, then the problem will always continue to arise. Mm. But there is room for further education, enlightenment of the generality of people in myriad of ways. The so-called, I'm sorry, elder statesmen, the old schools, and the New Testament kind of people that we are having today. <laughs> if we really get to know and have appreciation for the idealistic content of why we mm. are Nigerians, at the end of the day, many of those malpractices that we introduced to almost everything would have been greatly reduced. Because Nigeria is a nation, according to uh, he said Nigeria is a country where the best is difficult to attain, mm -hmm. but the worst never happens. Mm -hmm. But the oscillation we are having now is that people are even getting disenchanted about almost everything, which tends to make us to oscillate towards the worst of things coming to happen. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, Whatever anybody is saying, we should be very, very careful so that we can make best of bad situation. It doesn't necessarily mean it is when I go back to my village mm. that the best of things <laughs> will happen in my village. Those who are sustaining the economy of my village mm. may not necessarily have come from that place. Mm. And where I am, maybe in Lagos, if by chance I contribute my best to that place, whether or not I know anybody there, whether or not any politician comes around for me, I will know that I am serving the almighty God within the ambit of where I am, and I'm happy I'm also helping humanity in this myriad of ways. Mm. But you see, politics and religion, politics has been religionized, Religion has uh, been politicized, <laughs> and both politics and religion have been commercialized. Wow. And this That's is why we don't get the best of humans hmm. doing certain things in various positions where we have found them hmm. today. And this is where the issue of communication, education, mediation, dialogue, and arbitration hmm. really have to come in. Because look at the North and South Orchestra that we are having today, being orchestrated in divisionary uh, amplitude against letting us, an average Nigerian does not call himself a Nigerian again. It is, I'm from the north, you are from the south, I'm from the south-south, you are from the southeast, or you are from the southwest. And it is because of this political imputation to politics of you know, it's, a democracy is uh, born out of number. And this is why everybody is trying to manipulate to suit fancies. But that is not helping any one of us. Mm. And this is where we are having a lot of crisis. And this is where 
We should be concerned in restructuring our vitality mind in order for us to make progress in Nigeria. All right, thank you. Population dynamics and conflict resolution, the role of public relations. I'm sure you are enjoying my guest on the show today, Mr. Nifoshi. Yes, uh, you said the population is about planning. Yes. Planning and planning. And the world population, I mean, Nigeria population, Nigeria population is about 2.64% of the world population. And uh, I'm sure other countries of the world plan very well for their uh, population exercise. I'm saying so, that is why they are able to cater for the people. So where have you gone wrong in Nigeria in terms of proper planning for census exercise, in terms of provision of basic amenities for the people, and everything has been politicized. So what should population experts do to ameliorate this problem? Mr. Olani, you mentioned one thing. Okay, sir. Education mm -hmm. and education and the enlightenment mm -hmm. of general populace about what this is for. Mm -hmm. You see that when we talk about population in a country, it is not about a particular tribe mm -hmm. or the nationals of that country. Mm -hmm. Because when you provide water, potable water mm. for citizens living in a geographical space. It is not whether, I mean, nobody will come around to ask whether Nigerians are the ones drinking water. water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you provide electricity, mm. nobody will care to know whether it is only Yorubas that are using the electricity. So basically, when we have a very sound and reliable sensors and mm. we have figures that we can rely on for developmental planning mm. then we'll get it right mm. i mentioned the issue of census migration the other time yeah. and you can see how it will impact negatively on our planning mm. because when we look at what we ought to do in different cities in different towns and hamlets based on population but when we distort what will come out of a census exercise mm. due to census migration, we will not get it right. And that is why you travel around the country, you see that you see some facilities that are seriously underutilized. You mm. see reptiles in some hospitals mm. because these hospitals are located where they are not needed. Mm. Where they are not needed. So we need to re educate ourselves about why we are conducting the census. Mm -hmm. Basically, we should have in mind that it is for government to be able to provide and plan adequately for us. Mm. Thank you very much. Ah, something very critical you mentioned about the enlightenment and education. Sir, that means the media, they are not doing enough. Because only this is, I know that it is the beauty of the media to enlighten the people, to educate them on the need for them to cooperate with the enumerators during the exercise. Do you mean that the media are not really doing enough in this area? Yeah, you see, there is the aspect of, uh, in media, there is what is called individual credibility mm. and organizational credibility. Mm. And it all depends on bulk of these reporters, in most cases, and the media houses they represent. Mm. Are they really after developmental journalism? or they just want to mm. restrict themselves to the perspective of uh, now my brother did there mm. and all the rest of it. General education, in fact, the bulk of education that the society is uh, expected to have normally should come from various uh, media. And this is why today, when you look at the impact and implication of social media on the generality of the society. Mm. Yes, the social media is actually created for real public enlightenment, but the semi side of it is much more capitalized up on by many of those who lay claim to be uh, uh, functionaries of uh, media. And this is why today there is the barrage of misinformation and uh, people are now talking that uh, the social media is because this is the most modern mm. aspect of uh, media unlike the past when we were only restricted to the newsprint 
and uh, the television broadcast this thing. But Phew. today you are on YouTube, you are on so many things, but the bulk of misinformation that we are getting is born out of that. Mm -hmm. And this is why many of these people who lay claim to be media practitioners should please be mindful of the impact they create in the lives of people mm. because there is need for people to be educated in quantum and in quality too mm. so that they will know how best to uh, thrust their minds towards development our programs of government if there is any mm. because not very many media people are even conversant with the policy orientation of government mm. they are much more after personalities and the, these personalities tend to make mess of policies because of their politics and this is why even in democratic process where there is freedom of everything god has made each and every one sufficient to stand mm. but we have the free will to fall and this is why we should be very mindful so that we educate ourselves on what can bring us together divided we fall mm. united stand. we stand i think we should look at mm. that Th thank you very much uh, mr Nifushi, uh, let, let's shift our discussion away from this and uh, uh, let's talk about the supposed supposed high level of corruption that is attached to population censors, manipulation of figures by enumerators. We have had a series of experiences in the past. Mm. Uh, is this true? Uh, let me give you an instance. Uh, during the 1991, 96, uh, 2006, I beg your pardon. 2006. Yes, I know I participated in that mm. of 2000 and in 1991 as an enumerator. And uh, in 2006 also, I didn't do, but we regarded some people who probably went to some part of the north and probably they barred them from entering certain places, probably where they have their women. <laughs> Is this true that they should, oh, bash, you got, they should not enter the Muslim, that they should just, they would just only give them the figure of those people inside, which may not represent actually what they actually needed. So what's your opinion about this? So I want our people to actually, I want to clear uh, this impression for it you. is it is not my opinion it is the reality of what i know happens mm. what happens is nigeria is about the only country where we have a male and a female enumerator mm. going out to work then this idea of counting donkeys and whatever up mm. north does not arise wow this, this, this part of the misconception as misinformation and disinformation about censors taken in Nigeria. <laughs> there is nothing like Bashiga that mm. they cannot mm. enter. Mm. Yes, up north is a Muslim environment mm. where men will not ordinarily enter where they keep their women. And that is why we are female enumerators. <laughs> that is why we are female enumerators. Well, that is why you pair them. Yeah, that is why you pair them, a male and, and a female, to mm -hmm. work in an enumeration area, such that when they get to where the male cannot access, mm. the female goes in. But beyond that also, when it is time for enumeration, it is not as if the female goes into the wife's bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Most times, when these pair of animators get into a household. They meet with the head of the household, okay. tell him their mission, proudly enumerate him and the male, the males in the household. Most times, the man will call out his wives. Yes. Okay. He will call out his wives. Everybody will be outside there when the female animator will enumerate this woman. I'll give you one. This idea of they count donkeys, they just give figures, mm. does not arise. It does not. Mm. I have given reasons. I have given examples. Basically, because of Western education down south, as against Arabic education up north, mm. and this mentality of God will take care of children when they come, that our compatriots up north have as against those of us down south that will have families that we can cater for mm. based on our resources. resources. That's the difference. Mm. Now, when it is when when you when you see this, 
I just cited an example of you and I. I don't know how many kids you have, but I have just three, and I have one wife. And I know that socially, my compatriots up north, hmm. who are directors in the federal service, not many who are northerners, not many of them who have just one wife. Take that. Not many of them who have one wife. Also, because there are women up north marry early, mm -hmm. age 15, age 17, already as a child, age 17 here, whether been struggling to pass jam, already in year mm -hmm. one or year two mm -hmm. in university. university. Yeah. But up north, if she's not in school, she's already married mm -hmm. with a child. If a lady down south is not married, she's probably learning a vocation. I have seen instances of men marrying, we, we, we read about it, we see it, marrying their third, fourth wives who are far younger than them and who in no time have three, four children. <laughs> so when we talk about enumeration between the north and the south, mm. it is basically the same thing. Mm. Up north, we have a pair of animators working. Down south, we have a pair of animators working. A pair consisting of a male and, and a female. female. Such yeah. that wherever the male cannot yeah. enter, yeah. the female the will does. enter. But more importantly, like I said, mm. most times, the females in that household will even come out. So not, it's not done behind the it's not curtains. Do, it's not done behind the curtains. And it's <laughs> not done behind the head of the household. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let, let me now say this, because um, this is what we have been hearing. Uh, he said it's a misconception. Do you think our population practitioners do enough research on this? Because they will tell us when they get to the north, they count donkeys, they count cows, they count these sheep and the rest of them. Then there should be something, uh, probably a blueprint or something, a kind of research that will come from our PR practitioners, probably those who work even with the publishing commission, because we have PR, they have PR session in that uh, organization. Yeah, there should be that interdisciplinary signage. Mm. Signage in terms of getting to know, because even a PR practice cannot be said to be real PR practice when you don't get to have information mm. in terms of research as to the configuration of that organization. And having gotten that, you now look out for the channels through which or by which people could be reached in myriad of ways. Uh, it's not necessarily through the media houses alone. Mm. There is this interdisciplinary networking with similar organizations that can really bring out information that will educate each and every one of us. It's so nice that he came around mm. and told us now about such misconception. We should not be stereotyped mm. about age long held opinions and impressions <laughs> about certain set of people. And by the time we get, for example, those of us who had worked with the uh, federal government, we, 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 we mixed with and uh, mingled with a lot of people from different sociocultural backgrounds. Mm. And it has made us to know better that there is unity in, in diversity, diversity. Yeah. and mm -hmm. that we should capitalize on no matter what we think either in population either in economic development either in religion either in even marriage mm. by the time we start thinking along that direction we will be able to appreciate the fatherhood of god and brotherhood of man and we will be able to lessen all the conflicts and uh, cl uh, clashes of interest that we are being made to suffer today, which has culminated in securities in myriad of ways. Mm. But much more education, much more communication, much more association mm. and networking in myriad of ways. Thank you very much. Mr. Anifuoshi, your final take on this edition before we run the final. I will say Nigerians should keep in mind that population issues and census taking is for government to be able to plan for us.
Hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that you took part in 1991 census yes. and the 2006 census exercise. I don't know what role you played, but you will know one of the reasons and one of the ways by which the National Population Commission goes about its activity to make sure that whatever it comes up with is mm. acceptable to the generality of the people is to swap functionaries. Okay. We swap functionaries, supervisors come from the south, mm. they go they up will, north to work, people from the north come mm -hmm. down, down south to work. Before my retirement, I was in charge of the demarcation exercise in the south south. I'm from the southwest, from mm. Abelkuta, mm. but I coordinated the, uh, the demarcation exercise in the south south, covering the six states from Edo mm. to Cross River. So for me, mm. let us keep in mind that census taking population issues mm. are basically for developmental okay. planning. All right, census and population issue of amend for developmental planning and suffice to say that we should at all times co cooperate with government so that we can have a better country called Nigeria. This is where we draw the curtains of this week's edition of your image. Thank you so much, Mr. Larry Anifoshi, former director, National Population Commission. Thank you, so much. thank you very much. And uh, the former general manager, of corporate communication, Naipos, uh, Mr. Tai Olali. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, brilliant discussion. The honor is mine. And uh, we meet next week, God willing, on your image. I will always say I have no other country but Nigeria uh, is my country. So God bless my country. God bless Nigeria. See you next week.